Abdul and Ammon and other besides. So all these different groups, all these different armies have come against Jehoshaphat. So this is a, a day of trouble for him. All these forces and, uh, and trouble is coming to him. Uh, then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, and it's, it's interesting, you know, it's kind of funny here to think about. It. It's not, it's bad enough that they're all the armies are coming against, but then they come and tell him. People are good about that. They want to come and tell you just how bad it really is. <laughs> that's, that's one of the little fringe benefits. <laughs> People are good about that. Wanted, they, they came and told him. See, they want to make sure that he was aware of this. Uh, say, Jehoshaphat, uh, there comes a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria, and behold, they be in, and he tells them where it's at, uh, which is in Gedi. Verse 3, Jehoshaphat feared. And that's interesting. His first reaction, his, you know, his first response is he feared. And that's, I think it's good that it tells us that because that's just a human reaction when faced with bad news or with problems or with trouble. But see, Jehoshaphat is going to find out in this passage we're going to read where uh, the answer comes from, where the security and where the strength comes from in the face of all this trouble. He set himself to seek the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. They're looking in the right place, aren't they? Verse 5, And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord, before the new court. And then he begins to pray. In verse 6 he says, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? Rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might, that none is able to withstand thee? Uh, when he's praying this prayer, do you think he's saying these things to inform God? To tell God something he didn't already know? Oh, I didn't know that, Joshua. I'm glad you told me that. I wasn't aware. No, God knows this already. Why is he saying these words? He's praying this way because he needs to hear it. He's praying it, not because he thinks God doesn't know it, but because he, Jehoshaphat, the man who's praying it, needs to hear those words. He needs to remind himself. See, he's turning his attention from the outward physical world where there's trouble to the spiritual world where, and he's saying, you know what he's saying here? It's the same thing Jesus said, be of good cheer for I've overcome the world. He's saying, you know, God, I realize and I recognize that you're more powerful than any of these armies that face me. He says, you rule over all the kingdoms of the heathen. In your, in your hand, there is power and might. None's able to withstand thee. He's saying these things for his benefit, reminding himself of just how powerful the God that's on his side really is. Verse 7, Art not thou our God, who dost drive out the inhabitants of the land before Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? In other words, didn't you accomplish all of this great salvation for us? And you didn't do it just so they'd come back and, and kill us and destroy us. In other words, verse 8, And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us, as the sword, or judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. What he's saying here is, uh, we've established this temple, and he said, in the day of trouble, when evil comes, we stand in this house, in the house of God, and call upon your name. That's what he's saying. You know, in the New Testament, we don't have a, a physical temple like that. Jesus said, the day is coming, and now is. He said this in the fourth chapter of John's Gospel, when he was talking to the woman at the well. He said, you won't worship God in Jerusalem or here in this mountain, but you worship God in spirit and in truth. And God is a spirit, and those that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. Jesus is saying the real, the real worship takes place not in some physical house out there. That was just a picture of the real thing which is in here. See, And when they said, in the day of trouble, we're going to come to your house and call upon your name. See, the, the analogy for us is in the day of trouble, the house is not out here, but it's in here. This is where the house of God. This is where the prayer takes place. This is where the worship takes place. This is where we don't need to go. And this is the good thing about it. And I like Tulsa, by the way. We don't have to go to Tulsa to find God. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I've been to Tulsa a lot. But we don't have to go on a trip to the Holy Land to find God. He is at home in His temple. <laughs> Sorry, hit the microphone right here. That's just to call attention to it. <laughs> okay, go on reading. Verse 10, And now behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, and they turned from them. 
but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us, and come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that comes against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. I like the fact that all of this language is here because it's very human, and, and I don't think there's anything wrong with what he says here. He says, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. I think it's okay in a, in a time of trouble to just to just say to the Lord, I don't know what to do. I think that's that's a human thing. That, you know, and the truth is we don't know, always know what to do. Right? Yeah. We don't know sometimes. Uh, if we did, I, I'd like it. I, I would love that if I always knew what to do. I don't always know what to do. But you see, even if you don't know what to do, he says, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. We know the right direction to turn. Like I say sometimes, you know, people call with, with problems, uh, call me, and I say, I don't know what to do, I don't know what the answer to this, but I know somebody that does. <laughs> Let's turn to him. I don't know what the answers are, but I believe he's got all the answers. See, I'm just simple enough to believe he's got the, pro the answer for any problem. He's got, he's got just what it takes for any situation. Let's go on reading, verse 13. And all Judah stood before the Lord. Oh, you notice they're standing? In this, remember what Paul said, having done all to stand, stand therefore. They're standing before the Lord, and they're little ones. In other words, they're not... See, what is the significance of the fact that they're standing? For one, Well, one thing is they're standing before the Lord. The other thing is they're not just laying down and letting this difficulty roll over them and destroy them. They're not just being passive about it and saying, oh, well, I guess I'll just be killed by all these armies. <laughs> oh, well, okay, sir, oh, sir, oh, that's life. No, they're saying they're turning their eyes to the Lord, who's got more power than any trouble that comes upon them. See, that's what Jesus was saying is when he said, in me you have peace. Over, I've overcome the world, in other words, he said. Okay, they stood before the Lord, their little ones, their wives, their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph. Man, you get his whole lineage here. I wonder if this guy was there when they were writing all this down. He says, be sure you put all my lineage down. <laughs> so we, we get his whole background, his grandfather and everybody going back. Uh, anyway, upon this uh, person, and maybe they wanted to remember him because he brought the word of the Lord and it was so significant and important for them. Maybe that's why all this is written down. Verse 15, He said, Hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, thou king Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you. Here's God speaking out of heaven through this prophet. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. See, that's God's message to us, too, in our time of trouble. Don't be afraid. If only we could hear it out here. But see, he ordinarily doesn't speak out here. He speaks through his word, and he speaks in here. And the good thing, and the importance of praying and turning your attention like they did, our eyes are upon you, the importance of turning your attention to him is, if you'll do that, you'll hear him saying this to you. And he's, this is his message, not just to them, but to us as well. Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. Listen, here's why. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Now, we feel like it's ours because all the pressure and the trouble is coming upon us. And we feel the reality of that pressure. But he's calling our attention to the fact that you're not just out here standing on your own. You're in him. Jesus said, you're in me. Paul said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. We're not just individuals out here left out, you know, out in the open. We're in Him. And when something comes against us, they're coming against God. And he says, I take it personally. May I say it that way? He said, the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go ye down against them. This is interesting. He, he says, the battle is not yours, but then he says, go against them. This is interesting. He didn't just say, be passive and go home and forget about it. There is something to do. Listen to what it is. Tomorrow go ye against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and you'll find them by the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. He knew right where they were. He knew all about it. This tells me that God knows all about the problem before we come to him. He knows more about it than we do. He knew where they were. Verse 17. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Well, that's good news, isn't it? I'm glad about that. I don't know how that strikes you, but that strikes me as a pretty good message. You shall not need to fight in this battle. But then it's amazing. He says, set yourselves. But then he says, stand still and see the salvation of God. Now there is something for us to do. And let's go on reading and find out what it is. See the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah, Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Twice he's told them. He's emphasized. He's highlighted that. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged is what that means. Tomorrow, 
go against them. He says, he, it's like, it's almost as though he's saying two different things, but they're not different. He says, you don't need to fight.